Hi, in this short video we're going to take a look at some of the new functionality added to 2025.2. So as we know the major release of Revit normally is issued towards the end of April but we get to uh, intermediate point releases which contain additional features. So in this video we're going to take a look at some new functionality with the analytical automation and then we'll take a look at a couple of new platform features around the project browser and also around the manage links dialog. OK, so let's begin by taking a look at the analytical automation. So I'll select the Analyze tab. And of course here we have the analytical automation icon. Selecting this will launch the analytical automation panel, which is actually Dynamo Player. Previously, we only had two scripts that were pre-created for us. Analytical to physical for buildings or physical to analytical for buildings. But you'll now notice here we have a new function for 2025.2. Now there were some issues with the original script. Sometimes the framing wouldn't align properly to the floor slabs and we got quite a few nodes that were unconnected. So I'm going to test this out on the Snowden Towers project. So this is a sample project that actually ships with Revit. And as you can see here, it's quite a complex project. There's quite a few different framing arrangements. Um, a lot of the floor slabs are offset from the uh, steelwork because they're composite decks. We have quite a few different structural openings and so on. So let's now launch the physical to analytical for buildings 2025.2. So the first thing we need to do is make a selection set of the elements. So let's do that. Then you can see here we have some various different slider bars which will allow us to control the actual alignment factors to things like levels and walls and so on. So this is columns and walls. So of course if we don't want any adjustment to be made we can slide the slider bar all the way to the start but if we want the adjustment to be made a bit more aggressively we can start to increase the slider bar to the right hand side. So I'm going to just set something about um, middle here. Okay, we'll do that for each of these adjustment factors and then we'll go ahead and run the script. So this will just take a few seconds to run. Okay, we can now see that the run has been completed. So let's now inspect what we've actually been given here. So, so we'll go into visibility graphics, we'll switch off the model categories and we'll temporarily switch on the analytical model categories. And let's now zoom in to the framing in particular. This was a problem in the uh, previous scripts. And we can now see very clearly that the framing is nicely aligned with the analytical panel for the floor. We can also see all of the analytical model openings are correct. And looking down through here, it looks like we've got a pretty good connected model. What I quite like with this is we also get a report at the bottom of the dialog box here. So I'll go ahead and actually open this report so you can see how useful this is. Okay, so looking into the report a bit closer here, we can actually see that certain elements haven't actually been created. And it's nice to know what Dynamo has actually generated and what it hasn't been able to generate. So of course it gives us the model IDs here, so I'm going to go ahead and select one of these. And what I'll do is put the model elements back on, so we've obviously got something to select here. And then we can go up to the Manage tab and we can select by ID. Of course we can just paste in these element IDs here and then say show. And I can see here we've actually got a wall foundation which hasn't been able to be modelled. And of course there'll be probably other elements as well. And this is quite useful to know because we can go back and manually model these if required. Now another nice thing I like about the report here is that it also gives us uh, some tips and tricks. So you can see here that if an element hasn't been created then clearly we have to go ahead and create those manually. So here we can see that we've got analytical columns that are not aligned to a level. And you can see here that it's asking for a greater tolerance if we want those to be aligned. Now what's quite useful here is you can see that we get a whole bunch of these element IDs and they're all separated by commas. So of course if I go to select by ID I can actually paste in that entire string there and then click on OK and we can now see those elements have been selected and of course here we could go ahead and isolate those elements so we can understand this a little bit further and of course what's actually happened here is these columns have actually been modelled in one big lump as it were so potentially you know we could go down and start to break those out so it's really nice to have that report to give us a bit of guidance on what has been created and what we need to do to actually um, generate those elements ourselves 
OK, let's now have a look at some of the other aspects. So we'll look at some of the platform tools now. So looking into the project browser, we can now see that we've got these tabs across the top. Currently, I'm in the All tab, but actually, if I just wanted to look at the views, I can click this uh, tab here, and now we're just displaying the views in the model. Again, I might just want to see legends or schedules or the families in here, or perhaps the links that are attached to this project. So the filters up here are really, really good, um, certainly for larger projects. Another really nice thing that Autodesk have produced in this release is a new Manage Links dialog. So if I select the Insert tab and I go to our traditional Manage Links tool in here, we can see now that we have a completely revamped and reworked Manage Links dialog. Everything can now be seen in this one dialog box. Now, of course, if we want to, we can filter this out for specific links. So if I just want to see the Revit links, obviously I can click that. If I just wanted to see the CAD formats, again, I could click that. But it's quite useful to actually see everything in one big dialogue. Now, just looking down at the status here, I can see very easily I've now got one of these that are unloaded. Of course, if I had lots and lots of links in the project, I can actually organise these columns quite easily just by clicking them. Also, the information actually shown in the dialog box can be managed and filtered here as well. So again, if we wanted to see how many of those uh, links we've got in, or perhaps the version of these, we can actually switch these elements on and off as required. What's also quite useful here is we actually have a function to be able to actually filter and search for things. So in here, if I just want to find all of the files that start with Snowden, again, I can type that in, and here I can now see all of those links. Of course, we can select them all in one big go. We can unload them all, reload them, remove them, and so on. So this is a very welcome addition and update to the Managed Links dialog. OK, hope that's been useful. And in the next uh, video, I'll actually showcase some of the new functionality in Dynamo. OK, speak to you soon.